On our next episode of Painting and Travel, we're traveling Route 66 to Hackberry, Arizona. Sarah discovers a vintage gas station and general store, while Roger uses oils on canvas to paint a retired, rusty 1934 Chevy. What's so good about driving on Route 66? Maybe it's the long line of boxcars you see carrying all sorts of products from one end of this great country to the other. Or perhaps the feel of the resistance of your motorhome in strong winds. Just imagine driving this in the Dust Bowl of the 1930s. I like looking out the window at the combination view. Dusty, rugged flatness with an exotic mountain range in the distance. Maybe the fun of Route 66 is discovering treasure, and we found one right here in Hackberry, Arizona. Route 66 was established in 1926 and was known as the Main Street of America, running from Chicago to Santa Monica, totaling nearly 2,500 miles. Decades later, the interstate highways bypassed the communities and many businesses wound up closing. What remains now has been designated a National Scenic Byway. This vehicle caught Roger's eye and found its way to his canvas. And this is what I've decided to paint. It's a 1934 Chevrolet. I'm using oil paints today, and this is a linen canvas. I uh, toned this canvas with a bit of burnt sienna and a bit of olive green just to get that white off my board. All right, so let's get started. I have a lot of paints out on my palette today, just about every conceivable color. But this is really going to be sort of a study in uh, in rust. <laughs> this has uh, been out in the weather here for many, many years. And I'm just going to start to block in these dark areas here. I'm just going to pick up a lot of different colors. My cerulean blues, my greens, my browns, my ochres. And just start laying this in. Now this background here, this tone, will really help me to get this painting done a little more quickly than I might otherwise because uh, this warm tone here, this yellow ochre, burnt sienna looking color, a lot of that's going to just bleed through some of these tones that I put on here. It just makes, makes this a much easier, kind of gives me a head start on this piece. So at this point, what this all is, is just to laying in the basic tones. And right now I don't want to add any white with my paints here because I want these to be nice rich colors and if I were to add white I would start to get them lighter and this, uh, these uh, colors would begin to uh, look a bit chalky. Since we have a lot of green foliage around here even though this is rusty it's not reflecting much color I'm going to put some green in this back in here just because when I get this area going with the greens, uh, <laughs> if I put some green in here, uh, this area will just harmonize with the background more. Now I did sketch this a while ago so I could uh, get right to the painting portion. So I have this all laid out here in pencil. And I'll even pick up some of my reds, my alizarin and crimson. Put some of these very warm rust colors back here. Okay, some green and red. Those are opposite colors. This is very dark right back in here. It's just almost black. Now, I don't have black out on my palette, but if I mix some of these colors that I have on my palette, uh, I'll basically get what really amounts to a black. I can have this phthalo green and the alizarin crimson that just makes a very rich dark color. Now, if I were to add white to that, you would see some color in there, but since I haven't added white, it's just going to remain very dark. Uh, I could use other combinations as well. I could use ultramarine blue, 
some burnt umber that would just give me a very dark color. So there's a lot of different combinations that can be used when doing something like this. Here, <laughs> you know, there's no roof on this car anymore. It's, it's gone, so you can see the sky and the foliage above that, but this is part of the front of the car here, right above the windshield. And this up here is just gonna be trees. It's another car right back here. I don't know what it is, but it's another old rusty car. And uh, we have a few little, little details here. This is the back window of that car. I think this is a little bit later model car. It's got a rounded window. Now I can see as I move forward on this car, I do notice a lot more cool colors, some blue. So I'm going to take my cerulean blue and at this point, this, this area of the car gets light, so I think I have most of my darks in place. So now I'll go up and put in some of the middle tones. So I'll add a bit of white at this point. But uh, I see the sky, maybe some of the sky reflecting, even in this rusty surface that, like, like I said earlier, doesn't reflect much. But it will catch some of that light from the sky. So I'm making this a bit cooler, a bit bluer. Okay, right up towards the top. Gets to be kind of light up here. Maybe a touch of red in there. Touch of red and yellow. Now if I want, I can add more color to this piece than I see in my photograph. I don't think I'll need to very much, except maybe towards the end I'll put some accents or highlights here and there with some brighter colors. You can see how this underpainting here, this uh, warm tone is really helping me to move on with this painting. Because it's uh, a lot of this is sort of already done for me by having that tone underneath, that middle tone, warm, burnt sienna look. This is quite different than painting a restored antique automobile, and I've painted a number of those. At one point we did a show and painted Fatty Arbuckles limousine and that was a very beautiful car all restored but this is a different sort of uh, look here all these rusty tones I'm really picking up a number of different colors here just to vary things this right back here is where the gas tank is just sort of an oval looking uh, container back there well, it's good to get this blocked in. This is moving fairly quickly. All these tones don't have to be terribly accurate. I mean, it's a rusty vehicle, so this can vary some according to just really how it lands on the, on the canvas. This part right here is part of the uh, tire rack. I just keep moving around. I don't want to work in any one area very long. And we have the headlight here. I assume this is probably a chrome-plated headlight at one point, but it's all rusty now. A lot of the cars had stainless steel headlights and they did not rust. But this headlight here is definitely rusty. So it must have been made of steel or something. Just block in this car in the distance. It's not very far in the distance, but it is slightly behind this one. So I will make this one a bit less definite, a little less defined just to give that a little bit of a soft edge. And now we have these rims here. These are solid rims, no spokes. And again, I'll just sort of block those in lightly, trying not to lose my pencil lines underneath so I can see the detail there. Same way in the front here. Making the, making the ovals on these cars and tires are very important. You can't get them wrong. The whole look of the car will be off. But these are pretty simple here. Okay, let's put the tires in. Sort of a gray color. We'll use some ultramarine blue and a touch of burnt umber. Kind of a gray, make that a gray color. Now there's some variations in this tire as well, but uh, we won't make any of those uh, fine adjustments yet. 
just want to block this in as a large shape for now. And I'll move to the front one. Yeah, I just cut around my pencil lines. Well, you see how beneficial this color is on the canvas here? If I didn't have that tone on the board to begin with, I would have to be dealing with all the white underneath there and have to get rid of all that white, which would be real, um, a real chore. Well, now that I have most of the car blocked in, let's start with a background now. This is some of that real nice green foliage I often see out west. I don't know what kind of trees these are, but they're just a beautiful light green color. But I'm going to mix a bit of a darker green to begin with because I want to put my lights over my darks. So we'll start by just scumbling in some of this dark tone up here. Now this is all going to be very soft back here. This is just leaves and things. Eventually we'll put in some branches, some tree trunks. But right now, I just want to get this very soft look. And a lot of this background color can just come through. Okay, I'm just going to do this over the entire background here. So I'll jump ahead real quickly. And it doesn't matter if I bump into these areas too much. And I'm thinning this paint just so it covers quickly. Mixing some oranges with that, different colors. I'm not putting any white with this right now. I'm using some of the colors that have white in them, like this uh, yellow ochre but I'm not using any white, titanium white, because I want to get these the slightly darker tones in there to begin with. And then when we put some of these lighter leaves over the top of these darker areas, that's when we'll I'll use some of the white. Now I want my brushwork to go in all different directions here. This is leaves and foliage, so I just don't want to use short strokes at this point and just keep dabbing my painting and get a, a lot of uniform strokes. I'm just scumbling this on and going in lots of different directions, some horizontal, some vertical, just all different directions. And I'm just using the side of my brush. And by layering this, like this, I can just get lots of uh, color going on in here. I'm just not using one color. I'm starting with the color underneath here, this burnt sienna tone, and I'm just mixing a lot of different colors and putting on top of that. But as the painting goes on, we'll perk that up by putting some of the highlights and things on the edge here. We'll lighten some of these areas and brighten them. But my first priority here is to get the canvas covered. So now let's finish covering the canvas by working on this area down here, right on the ground. Now I'm looking at my photograph and I'm seeing that it's quite warm down there and quite light. But I don't think I want to use white right now. I'm just going to put this on thin and just make it slightly darker. If I were to use white with that at this point, um, I'm always afraid that things might get chalky looking. I don't want that. So I'm just going to put this on as a wash. And we'll be putting some other colors on there later, some whites, and brightening that up more. But this is, all this right now is just the underpainting. Well, it's pretty difficult to go over a painting like this in oils that's so wet. So we're going to let it dry for a day or so, and then come back to it and finish it. So this might be a good time to go to the Hackberry General Store, where we saw this car on Route 66. I want to show you around the Hackberry General Store. There's a lot to take in here. I call this a visual feast, or my favorite term, a beauty spot. First of all, notice how the dark sky from the impending storm makes the colors on all the signs and gas pumps really stand out. Here's the ultimate Route 66 convertible, ready to roll after a fill-up of high-test gasoline. 
the owner still drives it to and from work every day. And here are some of its retired buddies, no longer street worthy. The store owner has collected many items that might have been thrown away or buried or lost and displayed them in an attractive way that makes this place a work of art. An outdoor museum of Americana with no entrance fee. The placement of everything has been carefully thought out and there are scenes that inspire your imagination to come up with a story. Like these two pairs of boots, where are the barefoot owners? What are they doing? Now the antiques in this garage would have long ago deteriorated in a humid environment like Florida. So the dry desert air has its benefits when it comes to metal. I suppose that's why people who restore cars come out west to look for potential restoration due to the limited rust. This wonderful place on historic Route 66 is an oasis of vintage signs, vehicles, stickers, sheds, and soft drink coolers. It's a bright mirage of the past. There were so many great looking scenes here, I couldn't take enough pictures. Roger wound up with about a hundred reference photos and has made good use of them as many of these scenes are now preserved on canvas and will live on for a very long time. I'll show you some of them later on. Inside the general store was another gold mine of mementos as well as Route 66 souvenirs, some turquoise jewelry, ice cold drinks, snacks, a soda fountain, a girl from the 1950s, music, and a few movie stars. A gentle shop dog and a collection of license plates from all over. A favorite part of our visit here was watching the owner close up for the evening, grab a couple of carrots, and walk over to greet his other pets who were anticipating their evening ritual. Lots of affection and crunching here. The store's closed and the winds picked up, so it's time for us to head out. I really enjoy discovering parts of the United States by driving, using intuition as well as the GPS. I just have to pull over, stop, and investigate when I spot a place that's spectacular, like the Hackberry General Store. Back en route, we continue to enjoy the vast desert landscapes with a double rainbow, perhaps indicating the location of the next beauty spot. It's a thrill to drive on Route 66. This painting is dry enough now where I can continue with it without my colors blending into each other. So I'm going to start to bring up some of the contrast here, some of the lights, and sort of try and bring this to life. There's really quite a bit of color in this car, especially right back in this area. A lot of rusty colors. I'm just going to put on some more color and I'll lighten these areas, give them more contrast. Right now, it all appears just too much the same value. It's all sort of a middle tone value. All right, let's dip into this white and we'll really start to put some lighter colors on here. So right here, I'm still using a quite a large brush. I'll bring this roof over and that will make that contrast between the background and the car. And that's what this painting needs. It's just more contrast, so it just stands out better. I'm mixing some cerulean blue with this white. Right back here, we have these chrome bumpers. I'll continue to lighten this piece by bringing some more light areas right up here in the top. Again, I'll pick up some of these warmer colors. Bring this, bring the value of this wheel up a notch or two. And we also have this line here where the door is. So I'll use my ruler, just put my finger on the edge of this, use my ruler as a guide, and I'll drag this line down now that line curves when it gets down here. 
slightly, it comes up this way. Now we have this little bead that uh, runs around the car. And I load my brush up, bring that line way down here. Now on the top side of that, it's much lighter. So I'll mix a lighter color with some yellow ochre and red. I'll load that brush up. The paint's a little bit thin. If it were too thick, it wouldn't flow off my brush. So I load that up with sort of thin paint. And then I can, once again, put that lighter area right on here. Stops there and continues on. All right, I think that's enough for the automobile right now. Let's go back to the uh, background and work on that. Because some parts of that need to be lightened. And I'll just put on another layer back here of this foliage. Right back here, this is the dark part of the car because this is in the back here. This is the light side, this is the dark side. So to make this come out a little bit more, uh, I can put light against dark. So these trees in this area, I'm going to make them light. And that will make a, a contrast between this dark back of the car and some light foliage. So light against dark will do the trick for that. See, and that just brings out that shape there. Anything with dark against light will bring the eye to that area. Now here comes the fun part of the painting. That is putting some negative areas in the sky. So I'm going to mix some cerulean blue and white and make a blue sky. Maybe warm it up some with some yellow ochre because I don't want to get too far away from these warm colors. Let's place some negative areas where the sky is coming through the leaves of these trees. And maybe right up here, we have more of it, more sky. I don't want all these negative areas to be the same size or the same shape. I want to vary them. Now let's put some of that, some of this sky right down in here. Kind of dark against light. Now this green I put on here, this is wet, but most of the background is dry. So I'm able to put these sky holes in here, these negative areas, without that blue, that pale blue sky there mixing with much else on the canvas. This is a very hard line here. Let's rake up that hard line by putting a few sky holes right up against it. That way that line won't be quite so long. And then we'll put a few of those sky holes down here. Now I don't want to get too carried away with the sky holes, uh, which is kind of an easy thing to do. Now I'm sort of going to do the same thing down here in the foreground. Let me uh, clear off some of my palette. Now we'll uh, get some raw sienna and white. And I'm just using a light touch because I don't want to lose all this nice texture and color I have underneath. Again, working from dark to light seems to be a good method for me. I like to get as much variation in these colors as I can, even though they're very subtle, subtle changes. All right, let's put in a few of these greens here in the foreground where we have some of these weeds. And again, I take the edge of my brush and load it up and I just flip that up. Now it's tempting to use a small brush and do every single little weed in here, but I'm going to try and avoid that and stay away from that right now. Just stay with this larger brush. Just use the edge of my brush just lay it down, just pick it up like that, flip it up. A few more touches should finish this painting. 
some more light green leaves in here and just some small strokes to indicate a few of those small leaves and then a few more highlights right on the edge of the car and down here more detail in the grass just a touch or two with the brush to indicate some smaller weeds and with a darker color put in a we'll put in a few of these branches so we'll see those branches and then we They'll disappear within the leaves. And maybe a tree trunk or two right over here. I'll lighten that gray some and we'll put just a couple more branches and tree trunks in this area. That'll just break up that space a little more. Give it a little more interest there. Well, this painting looks finished to me now, so I'll leave you with this and a few other paintings I've done at the Hackberry General Store on Route 66. For more information about painting and travel with Roger and Sarah Bansimer, visit paintingandtravel.com.